made it all right. Right to the station. Fire description of both Benson to Sheriff Briggs at Sage City. I'm sure ought to wild them yokels in State City, eh, yes. Professor? <laughs> Listen to me, my friend, Professor. Zika Daniels, impresario deluxe, has never composed a song that was not a colossal success. Well, you sure got intellect, Professor, but I'd have swore that number was older than you. No, no, no I... Say, say, wait a minute. Listen, Frog. Hand me my trustworthy rifle. I think I see... Something that resembles a mammoth coyote down there. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. I never did see a coyote who looked like that. It's wearing a hat. Well, sir, now that's right. Well, that's unusual, ain't it? Yeah. Hey, let's get out and investigate. Hold on there, stranger. Wait a minute. Hey, you better take it easy here. Here, take yeah. a drink of this. Pretty weak, ain't it? I'll be all right now. Yeah, well... We're heading for Sage City. You can rest up there. Do you want to go with us? Thanks. I got a lot of business to take up for the sheriff the first town we hit. Yes, well, we'll talk about that later. You come along with us here. Go through the train thoroughly, boys, and if Wolf puts up a fight, shoot to kill. I'm Sheriff Briggs. I got a wire to search your train for an escaped murderer. Who's in there? Gene Autry, the radio star. We'll take a look inside anyway, for good measure. He's asleep. I won't disturb him. I reckon he's not on the train, Sheriff. He searched everywhere and couldn't find a trace of him. That's he about... Dropped off on his head now. That's about what he's done. He probably figured the train would be searched when he pulled in here. Get your horses and comb the country. I didn't expect to see you in a phony outfit like that, Wolf. We got your wire signed, Benny. Come on, Flash is waiting in the car. 
Hank and I were beginning to get worried when you didn't show up, Wolf. We thought maybe you'd run into the law again. I did. The prison break worked out just as you had it framed, but I ran smack into a sheriff's posse. If I hadn't caught the hind end of the limited and traded places with Autry, I'd be stretching a rope by now. This Autry's a radio singer, isn't he? Uh, he was until I knocked him out and threw his body out the train window. Now, Wolf Benson's dead, and I'm Gene Autry. Yeah, oh, but I've got all his identification papers, and that telegram shows that he loaned Jefferson Lee $10,000 in cold cash not very long ago. Now, Lee hasn't seen Autry for 15 years, so here's my idea. Thanks, fellas. I'll be back to the theater soon to see the sheriff. Pardon me, fellas. Did you tell me where I could find the sheriff? Yeah. In his office, just around the corner. That's right. looking for me, he's sure going to find more than you expect. Come on, boys. He's a pal of ours. Oh, he is, is he? Yeah. But I tell you, I am Gene Autry. Yeah? And I'm Bing Crosby. Boo, 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 boo. Oh, boo, 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 yourself. If you let me wire east to my attorneys, I can prove my identity. You're not going to wire nobody. Well, why don't you let him prove he's Gene Autry? Wolf Benson wasn't on the train when it arrived here yesterday. And Gene Autry was, and that's good enough for me. What did the sheriff mean about Gene Autry being on the train when he come into town? That was Wolf Benson, only he didn't have sense enough to look at anything but his clothes. Yeah, okay. Answer to the wire you sent. It's from Sheriff Jones, who authorizes us to take Wolf Benson out in the morning and hang him. Come on, you two. The judge is waiting to sign your release. Oh, no. Why, well, we haven't had a decent meal in days. Sir, listen, can't the judge wait? Get going. Wait a minute. I demand to know why I'm being held here in jail. If you haven't got sense enough to know, I'll tell you. Cottonwood County just authorized us to hang you in the morning, as per schedule. All right, come on. Just a minute, brother. Gene, don't worry, because I'll get you out of the have a corpus plea. Don't go in that judge. I never was there in all my life. State City has decided to release you on condition that you both leave town immediately. Oh, thank you, Your thank Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Yeah, thank you. Your Honor, I should like you to enter the plea of cum laudia hoc insignia for the prisoner to give him the chance to prove that he is Gene Autry and not the despicable outlaw Wolf Benson. 
Uh, 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 you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, Your Honor may possibly recall the famous case of uh, Rubinowitz versus O'Halloran. Page 112, volume 9 of the Supreme Court decisions, wherein a prisoner who enters a plea, ad valorem, is entitled pro bono publico to a hearing. E pluribus unum. You're right. We'll give him a chance to prove his identity. Sheriff Briggs, bring to the court as many Gene Autry fans as you can locate. They shall decide the prisoner's fate. Now beat it, and don't let me catch either one of you in town after tonight. Come on, boys. I had an awful hard time, but I finally persuaded the judge and the sheriff to let you prove your gene Autry by singing to them. Yes, now, they have condescended to let some of your fans be the jury, my friend. You've got me in a worse fix than ever now. I can't sing a note. That choking the sheriff gave me just about ruined my voice for a while. You can't sing, huh? Well, don't let it worry you, pal, because me and the professor will figure out something swell, won't you? Oh, yes, of course, sir. Professor, me and you has got to think up something. Gene Autry singing? Why, so it is. Say, do you suppose that we have been double-crossed? Hey, look. But in his heart he will still be a cowboy. We are going to borrow that phonograph. You're going to move? Wait a minute. Uh, uh, good afternoon, madam. Beautiful day. Uh, pardon me just a moment. I want to go where the longhorn cattle Thank you. It is only fair for me to warn you that your listeners will be radio fans of Gene Autry and that all are very familiar with his voice. <coughs> oh! Practicing, suppose you start singing. All right, I'd like to get a tune. The cowboy may roam from his homeland. Way out on the great divide But in his heart he will still be a cowboy And long for his pony to ride Dear old western skies, I want to go where the longhorn cattle roam Dear old western skies There'll never be another place like my old home It seems that I can hear the cattle lowing Seems that I can see the purple sage blowing I hope old paint and I will herd the doggies by and by under dear old western skies dear old western skies 
I'm sorry, my boys. Uh, thank you. But these uh, fits come on me every few minutes. <coughs> I mean months. Sorry. Pardon me. Your Briggs, you may release the prisoner. He has proven without a doubt that he is Gene Autry. Thank you very much. Hey, did it work? Well, I believe so, but I can't tell yet. Thanks, sir. Great, boy. Success. Millhouse and Daniels have scored again. Now listen. You go and get Gene and meet me at the livery stable. I'm going to swap this outfit for some saddle horses and some clothes, and we'll get out of this town. All right. Hurry up, fellas. Let's go. Well, nobody will ever recognize us now. I hope they don't. It's a Gene Autry record. Hill Western Skies. I'll bet them two show producers tricked us into letting Wolf Benson loose. Get the posse. Up that way. There they go. Come on. Circling back towards the horses. you know the way to Mineral Springs? Sure. I'd say it was about 300 miles straight south. But it'll take about a week to ride it. Well, let's get started. I've got to get there as quickly as possible. Aunt Peggy, but it'll be that much better when Gene Autry is singing to us in person. I can hardly wait to see him. He sure helped us out of a tight spot. I wonder how he looks after 15 years. That must be Gene now. I, I suppose you're Gene Autry. You guessed right, ma'am. I'm looking for Jefferson Lee. Why, oh, Gene, you old son of a gun. Well, you're a sight for sore eyes. Listen, you remember my telling you about my niece, Mary Ann, don't you? This is her. She's been on the East singing. Now she's come out here to help with the entertainment. I'm sure glad to know you, Mary Ann. Oh, Mr. Baldwin, this is Gene Autry. Baldwin? Come on, Gene, let's hurry on the house. Ma's just been having a fit ever since she got your last wire. <laughs> Well, it was Gene, Mom. Here he is. Oh, it's so nice to see you, Gene. Well, it's nice to be here, Mrs. Lee. Mrs. Lee? Why Mrs. Lee? Well, that's your name, isn't it? Why, certainly. But uh, you used to call me Aunt Peggy. Oh, 
You'll have to forgive me, Aunt Peggy. I, I'd forgotten. Can I see you alone for a minute? Why, certainly. We can step into my office. I've got some bad news for you, Mr. Lee. I'll have to ask you to return that $10,000 I loaned you. Why, you only let me have the money a month ago, and I've already spent about $3,000 of it. There's nothing else I can do, Mr. Lee. I've had several business reverses lately, and right now I'm in serious financial difficulties. If you haven't the full $10,000, I'll have to take what I can get. Well, I don't know what I'm going to do without the money. I plan to use it to pay off my entertainers and buy my supplies for the summer. I had every available room reserved, too. It can't be helped, Mr. Lee. I'm sorry. Take off your glasses and let's see how you look after all these years. Well, you've changed considerably. A little heavier, a little older. Well, I suppose the years do something to all of us. Oh, by the way, have you got that note I signed for you? Oh, yes, sir. Uh... Yes, any, anyway, I had it when I left New York. I must have mislaid that note, Mr. Lee, but I'll sign any sort of receipt you want me to. You'll not sign any receipt and you'll not get any money because you're not Gene Autry. Why, well, what do you mean I'm not Gene Autry? Just what I said. In the first place, I never gave him any note for that money he loaned me. In the second place, he lived in Chicago and not in New York. Now, you get out of here, you crook, before I send for the sheriff. But you're crazy. Here's the telegram you sent me on the train, and I have plenty of identification in my luggage outside. You may have this telegram and all of Audrey's identification papers, but still, you're not Gene Autry. Now, I don't know what your game is, but I'm going to find out. If you know what's good for you, Lee, you'll come through with that money. Otherwise, it'll be just too bad. I'll see what the sheriff's got to say about that. trying to follow Audrey now. All we can do is call the sheriff. dollars reward for the capture, dead or alive, of Gene Autry, wanted for the murder of Jefferson Lee. That Jefferson Lee, don't he own that ranch where we're going? Yes, and he was one of the best friends I ever had. Wolf Benson must have gone on to the dude ranch masquerading as me. And when Lee couldn't be fooled, he killed him. Well, the murder has certainly placed you in an exceedingly embarrassing position, Gene. Now, you have got to capture him before you dare try to identify yourself. That's right. The star packers in this part of the country shoot first and talk later. I'm 
sorry, miss. It's all our fault for leaving the horses in the road. Doesn't make much difference, I guess. Everything else has gone wrong. Well, I wouldn't say that. Well, we'll get you out of this difficulty in no time. Give me a hand here, fellas. Listen, that fellow of the girls wearing one of my suits that was in the luggage stolen by Wolf Benson. Just keep quiet and let me do the talking. From now on, I'm Tex Smith. There you are, Miss. Uh... Oh, thank you. I'm Mary Ann Lee of the Mineral Springs Dude Ranch. Was Jefferson Lee related to you? He was my uncle. Did you know him? Well, I'd heard of his ranch. In fact, my two pals and I were headed that way now to apply for work as entertainers. I'm Tex Smith of the Millhouse and Daniels Vaudeville Troupe. We do need entertainers, Mr. Smith, but we just can't afford to hire them. Well, may I ask, could you furnish us with suitable uh, uh, food and lodgings? Why, uh, I think so. Well, then consider us hired. Well, me and him is artists of the first water, ma'am, and our work comes first. Now that you've hired such wonderful talent, maybe they can fix the car. The starter won't work. Sure, we can give you a tow. Give me a hand, fellas. Do you mind riding one of the horses back to the ranch? I'd like to have Mr. Smith in the car with me so that we can talk over the entertainment plan. Me. I 
king. And though I was warned, all this warning she scorned, for she was a headstrong young thing. Whoa! I went for a ride on his tandem. He promised we'd wed in the spring. But his love did falter. He balked at the altar and never came through with a ring. Whoa! Don't trust a bicycle racer. Their promises don't mean a thing. Start meddling, just keep right on peddling. They never come through with a ring. Oh, don't, don't trust the bicycle racer. Their promises don't mean a thing. Just take my advice, though their love may be nice. They, they never, never come, come through with a ring. Oh, they, they never come, come through with a ring. Our next act will go on in a few moments, folks. So until then, dance and be happy. May I have this dance, Marianne? Oh, you fellas keep an eye on things here. I'm going to slip upstairs and take a look through Baldwin's room. Place where we can talk. Okay, follow me. fingers on the dude jewelry here before the lid goes off everything. One of the gang was in Sage City this morning and they learned that Gene Autry ain't dead. Are you sure? Absolutely. He had town dressed in wolf's clothes and was pinched for the sheriff. Is Autry still in jail? No, he sung his way out. Left Sage City with a couple of ham actors. Since then, he's disappeared. It's all right. The roundup starts tomorrow morning. We'll pull the job when all the dudes are out on the range. We haven't anything to worry about, Hank. Sure glad you dropped in, Hank. Why, you crazy dumbbell. <coughs> Those are my boots. And that suitcase was under the bed and wasn't open. Not when I went downstairs to dance. Somebody's been snooping around here. Yeah, and I got a good idea as to who it was. Gene Autry left Sage City with a couple of ham actors. And Tex Smith shows up here with a couple of ham actors. I get it. Come on. <laughs> i 
got troubles on each trail There'll be times when you will fail You'll be blown by winds of chance You'll find sorrow and romance Ride on a carol Remember while you roam You'll find the carol A road that leads back home Ride on the carol The long, long trail is calling Ride on the carol Along the Rio Grande You'll find troubles on each trail times when you will fail you'll be blown by winds of chance you'll find sorrow and romance right on the carol remember while you roam you'll find the carol a road that leads back home and now friends it gives me great pleasure to announce Miss Marianne Lee and Mr. Tex Smith in a harmonious duet entitled By a Water Wheel. In the valley there's a lazy river flowing Drifting ever onward toward the sea not Tex Smith. And sure enough, Gene Autry. We gotta get him out of the way before he puts a crimp in our plans. But it seems to croon a song of love to me. I'll always dream of a lazy stream where a water
scared. Woo. Boy, it sure is a relief to find out I ain't dead. We're all relieved, Frog. And your knife throwing act was a big success anyway. Well, folks, the roundup starts tomorrow, so you'd all better turn in and get some rest. Five o'clock comes pretty early in the morning, you know. That's right. Well, good night. Good night. I'll see you in the morning. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you in the morning. Good night. Good night. Why didn't you tell about the knife being thrown at you when the lights went out, Jean? Then you know who I am. There's a lot of things I can't tell you just yet, Marianne. You'll probably know a lot more about them tomorrow. Good night, and I'll see you in the morning. Good night, and please be careful. I will. Flash and his gang plan to rob the ranch safe tomorrow. Yeah? That means Wolf Benson will be here. And he's the man we want. Mm -hmm. Our plan of action is this. Stay out here and keep your eyes open, Hank. Gents are through looking at that jewelry. Suppose you reach for the roof. Turn around. What happened to you? Gene Autry knocked me out. He's probably inside right now. What are these two fellas doing with you, Sheriff? They're Gene Autry's pals. This is a frame-up. Why, why, Hank here... Shut up. Put them back on the horses. I'm sure glad you got here, Sheriff. Arrest this man, Sheriff. He's Gene Autry. I am Gene Autry. 
but he's Wolf Benson and he's in cahoots with Baldwin. Mr. Baldwin is a respected guest here. You admit you're Gene Autry. That's enough for me. You go after Miss Lee. You two stay here until she shows up. Right. to listen to me, Sheriff. Wolf Benson and his men are here to raid the ranch. I know what I'm doing. You can do the rest of your talking from behind the bars. I could sure feel a rope around my neck that time, Flash. Got to hand it to you for being a smart talker. You stick around me and you'll learn a lot of things. But we've got to work fast, though, now. Here. I ain't keen about wet nor snow and sparklers. Don't let that worry you. We'll take the job off your hands. Get their guns and tie them up. Sheriff. It's a frame-up. You ain't got nothing on me. Yeah? Well, Flash Baldwin is pretty badly hit, Wolf, and he just told me the whole deal. I'm sorry, Audrey. When shadows fall and the sun goes down Like a water wheel, my dreams go on 
Beside a lazy river stands a shady tree. A little bit of heaven's waiting there for me. I'll find my 